Hey guys, today we are going to be taking a look at how to use SAS or to be more specific SCSS in your React apps. So as you can see, I've already created a little sample app, um, which is basically just the create React app prefab with little empty component that just returns a div with lower ipsum in it, just so we have something we can style. So to get started, we of course need to install SAS. For those that don't know, SAS is a CSS extension language, or SCSS is a CSS extension language, which will make it easier for us to write understandable and easy to read code. So we can actually just restart our app now that we installed it because everything like Webpack and all that stuff will be handled for us as soon as we do the npm install, which of course is really handy. So now the app is restarting and as you can see, we got our lorem ipsum again. So now let's get into actually using the SCSS. So as you can see, we got this test component here, which we're going to modify. And we of course need a style file. So that file is going to be called test.module.scss. This module part is actually just so um, that the styling only applies to the test component, and nothing else. So it's not actually necessary, but using modules in SCSS is really handy. So we're going to do that. So now let's start off by giving our div a little class name. So that class name for now is going to be a or test. Let's go with test. And now we're just going to say, okay, import dot slash test dot module dot scss. Just so we have a style right in our um, component file so that we can use it. Now let's also add some styling for the test component. And uh, that styling for now is just going to be the background color of, let's go with lime, for example. And if we now reload, you'll see nothing is actually happening. And that's because we can't just import the file like this. We need to import an object from it, a styles object. And then we can use that as our class name. So basically styles.test is our class name. Um, and that makes uh, things a lot easier sometimes because now we can actually programmatically use CSS and not just import it as class names. And as you can see, now it's actually working, which is quite fine. So now let's get to some more sophisticated stuff. Like let's add a P tag and an A tag. We actually don't need an href in here because we just want to use it for styling. And the P tag is going to contain the word lorem and the A tag is going to contain the word ipsum. So for now, both of these are in the div and green. And that's fine. So now, if you wanted to style the P and A tag, you would either need to give them class names or a normal CSS, you would do test P or test A. And as you can imagine, this takes up a lot of space and is really repetitive because you always need to write this test bit. So one benefit of SCSS is you can actually put this P tag or this P styling right in the test component so that you can basically nest CSS expressions, which makes things a lot easier to read if you're a coder. So now you could do something like color red. And now only the P tag is red and the A tag isn't. If you now wanted to style the A tag, you could of course do that as well with like color, I don't know, blue. And as you can see, this nesting already makes things a lot nicer on the eyes if you're a coder. But that's of course not everything CSS or SCSS can do. You can also create variables. Now you might think, yeah, but CSS added these a while ago. Yeah, but these variables are a bit nicer on the eye. So we're gonna work with them for now. And we're gonna go with primary color red. So as you can see, we added this little dollar symbol, which basically indicates, yeah, this is a variable. You need to store that value somewhere. And we can actually use it in the same way that we declare it. So basically now the p-text color is primary color. If we now reload, then you can see the p tag is still red because we stored this inside of a variable. So um, that's fine and dandy, but as I mentioned, CSS can do that already. There's one more thing that CSS can't do though, and that's a map. So basically a map works in the following way. You're gonna say um, you wanna define a variable color or colors, and you're gonna put the value in normal parentheses. And now you can say, okay, I have a color primary, that's gonna be red. I have a color secondary, 
and that's going to be green, and so on. We of course can't uh, forget the semicolon. And now if we want to use this primary color, we can actually get rid of the one up here and just use a method actually, because SCSS also gives us methods. And this method is going to be app minus get. And we're going to basically say, okay, I want to get the value primary from the map colors. And now if we take another look, we should see that everything is still working just fine. And all of this is stored in one single variable. So now you could say, okay, secondary is blue and say that the A tag actually also gets this value from this map right here, but the secondary one. And now if you wanted to change these colors to something else, you would just need to change them in the map up here and not somewhere down here in like um, the extra CSS, which is already really, really handy in my opinion. So now let's move on by adding some more CSS trickery, which will make your components so much easier to use. So the next thing we're going to get at is mix-ins. So mix-ins are basically blocks of CSS that you want to define and use at a later point. So let's say you want to create a flex container. Yeah? So this could be a flex box that is supposed to always center its contents, something you will have to do quite often in CSS. And it takes up three lines. So that's a bit much sometimes. So how about actually offloading this to a little mix-in? So the way this is going to work, we're going to say display flex, justify content center, and align items center. And now every div that we assign um, this flex container to will actually center everything that it contains. So to test this out, we're going to go to our test divs styling again, and we're going to tell it that it has a height of 100 vertical height and a width of 100 view width. And if we now reload, you can see the component this display is just fine right here. You might uh, also see that you have this little white border right here. That's just a little artifact that uh, some of the default styling from Create React App gives you. We're going to fix that by just saying that our p tag is going to have a margin of zero. There are, of course, a multitude of ways you can fix that, but for our case, this should be plenty. So now let's actually get to using the flex container. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to go back to our test component because the test component is going to be the one that should center things. And we're going to say add include flex container, so the name of our mixin right here. And if we now reload, then you can see that our content is actually centered already. So this is working just fine. And if you wanted to create any other or flex or flex center container, for example, then you would just need to add this include flag instead of always adding these three lines, which after some time really saves space. And if you give the script of names, it can actually make things easier uh, to read than harder to read. So this is already a big benefit of using SCSS because reusing code is always better than rewriting code. So now let's get to the next part, which is also actually quite close to this, but still really handy. So now let's say we've written this test component and um, we want to write another one of those here. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to add another diff right here. We of course also need to fix the, C, uh, the React for that. So let's add a line break right here so that everything looks fine again. And now we got uh, another diff and it's going to be called test2. So if we now take a look, we should be able to scroll and down here is our normal lorem ipsum. Now the thing is we actually want test2 to inherit a lot of um, attributes from test1 or test without a number <laughs> beside it. And the way we can do that in SCSS is by actually just saying okay dot test2 and now inside of its attributes we're gonna say that it add extends or add extend test. And now if we try that out, we should see that there are now two identical divs here. But this of course doesn't really make sense yet because we didn't add any other styling. So we could have just called a test. But if you now wanted to say, okay, I want everything to be the same except for the background color, which I want to be, I don't know, purple, then you could do that. Because now both of these are identical in size with flex, um, flex box styling and all that stuff. 
but the background is different and you just needed to use like how many lines yeah four for adding a completely new component because normally you'd need to at least rewrite some of the styling which you now don't need to do so that's of course another benefit of using scss in your react projects because the whole purpose of react is basically to not rewrite your code so having that option in scss or css of course makes things a lot easier to do and a lot faster to do and there's of course one more thing i want to show you which is that you can actually also create variable files so if we now wanted to say variables.scss right here and we defined another variable called i don't know heading then we could do that and say okay that's two ram and then if we wanted to use it we could we'd just say okay add import dot slash variables.scss we of course can't forget the semicolon because otherwise our css will break and now we could just say okay i'll um i don't know i create another div inside of here and then we can just style that div right right inside of our scss again give it a background color of gray and a padding of the variable we just imported and now as you can see that padding was applied and everything is working just fine even though that variable is actually in another file so as you can see using scss with react can be really useful especially because i think it really captures kind of the spirit that you also have when using react of reusing stuff and not repeating yourself and yeah it just makes things a lot easier sometimes and even if you're not using like mix-ins and includes and all that stuff just having the option of nesting css expressions is already worth it in my opinion so i hope this interests you let me know if you're going to use scss or maybe even sass because yeah you just need to import sass and you can use whatever you want then and also let me know what you're going to use it for so i hope you'll have a good day